To solve systems of linear equations, we can use inverse matrices. So before we do that, you need to know what Gaussian elimination is. You need to know how to use Gaussian elimination on the augmented coefficient matrix to solve systems. And you need to know how to calculate inverses of matrices. So we're going to jump right into using inverses to solve systems. So how will we do that? If I'm given a system that's represented by this matrix equation AX equal to B. If I have the inverse matrix available and I multiply both AX and B on the left with the inverse matrix, then the fact that matrix multiplication is associative means I can write it as such. And A inverse times A just gives me the identity matrix. So X, which is what I'm trying to solve in a linear system, is just A inverse times B. So if I'm given a system, I can use the inverse matrix to solve the system. So this is another way to solve systems of linear equations. And we're using the inverse matrix. So let's take a look. Jump right in. We're going to start with a small one, two by two system. The process stays the same for bigger systems. But let's see how to use it. Now, please remember, we can only find the inverse of a matrix if that matrix is invertible. So if the determinant of the coefficient or the determinant of the matrix is non-zero. So in this case, the determinant of the coefficient matrix of a system is non-zero. But if I look at this coefficient minus 1, 2, 4, minus 7, we know, well, you can calculate 7 minus 8 is minus 1, so the determinant is non-zero. So we can find the inverse of this matrix. So how are we going to find the inverse of this matrix? Well, we're going to augment the coefficient matrix with the identity matrix. We're going to do Gaussian elimination on it until my left-hand side is the identity matrix, and then whatever's on the right will be the inverse matrix. So let's start. start. First step will be to take the first row and multiply it with minus 1, because we want a leading 1. So we've got 1, minus 2, minus 1, 0. Second row stays the same, 4, minus 7, 0, 1. Then we want a 0 underneath, so we take row 1 and we Multiply it by 4, minus 4, and add it to row 2. So row 2 plus minus 4 times row 1. Row 1 stays the same. And row 2 becomes 0 minus 2 times minus 4 is 8. Minus 7 plus 8 gives me 1. 4 and... One. All right, we've got our leading one, so we want a zero above it. So our next step is to take row one and add a multiple of row two to it. What's the multiple? Well, two times row two to get a zero above. So that gives me one zero. Then I take row two times two is eight minus one is seven. One times two is two plus zero is two. And row two stays the same. So what we've now found is that A inverse, where A is the coefficient matrix, so if I say A is the matrix minus 1, 2, 4, minus 7, A inverse is then whatever's on the right-hand side, 7, 2, 4, 1. Now you can check that your inverse is correct by multiplying it with the original matrix and getting the identity, but we trust our workings here. How do I find my X? Well, in this case, X is X and Y. And I get that by multiplying 4, 3, the values on the right-hand side of the equation, with the inverse matrix on the left. So that's 7, 2, 4, 1 times 4, 3. And that gives me 28 plus 6 is 34. And 8. Oh, where am I multiplying? 16 plus 4, which is 19. And there we go. So we've solved for x and y. How do I test my answers? By substituting it back into the equations and making sure they satisfy the equations. So that's a way to test your answers. You also can use different methods, Gaussian elimination on the augmented coefficient matrix. You can use Kramer's rule, but those are three different ways to find 
solutions to systems of equations, linear equations. Just take a note, the matrix inverse ma method only works when I can find the inverse, and that will only be the time when I have a unique solution. If your system has no solutions or an infinite number of solutions, then Gaussian elimination on the augmented coefficient matrix is the only way to get to the solution. The inverse matrix method and Kramer's rule only works when I get a unique solution. All right, so what if the system gets a bit bigger? If the system gets a bit bigger, what we need to do, same story, we want to find the inverse. Now, like I said, there's other ways to solve the system, so we're just looking at this specific method. So we take the coefficient matrix, One, zero, minus one, zero, one, one, two, one, zero. Take the coefficient matrix, augment it with the identity matrix to get the inverse. Do Gaussian elimination until we get the identity matrix on the left hand side. So we already have our leading one. We've got one zero, so we need a zero over there. So we take row three and add a multiple of row one to it. What multiple? Minus two. So row one and two stay the same. So we get zero. One. Zero plus minus one times minus two is two. Minus two. 0 and 1. All right, so I've got my leading one. I've got zeros underneath. My next leading one is there. I need a 0 underneath. There's already a 0 above it. So we're going to take row 3 and add minus 1 row 2 to it. So row 1 stays the same. Row 2 stays the same. So for row 3, I add minus 1 times row 2. 2 to it, so it'll be 0, 0, minus 1, so it becomes minus 1, 2 minus 1 is 1, and we like that because that means our leading one is already there. Minus 2, minus 1, so that stays minus 2, 0, minus 1, 1, minus 1. There we go. All right, now I've got my third leading one already there, so I need zeros above it, so I'm going to do two steps and one here. I'm going to take row 1 and add 1 times row 3 to it and I'm going to add, take row 2 and add minus 1 times row 3 to it. Row 3 stays the same, 0, 0, 1, minus 2, minus 1, 1. Row 1 becomes 1, 0, 0, minus 1. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. 0, Plus 1 is 1. Row 2 is 0, 1, 0. We're adding minus 1 times row 3 to it. So 0 minus minus 2 gives me 2. 1 minus minus 1 is 1 plus 1. So that gives me 2. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. So I've got my inverse. My inverse is what is on the right hand side. So how do I find x? My x is an x, y, z in this case. And I find it. By multiplying that inverse, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 2, 2, minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, 1. Multiplying that with the values on the right-hand side, 4, 6, 16. And that gives me minus 4, minus 6, it's minus 10, plus 16 is 6, 8, plus 12, minus 16 is 20, minus 16, that's 4. Minus 8 minus 6 is minus 14 plus 16 is 2. And I've solved for x, y, and z. 6, 4, 2. Using the inverse matrix method. So just a reminder, there's, not, there's three methods to solve systems of linear equations. This inverse matrix method, Kramer's rule, and Gaussian elimination on the augmented coefficient matrix. The inverse matrix method and Kramer's rule only works if I've got a unique solution while the augmented coefficient matrix on Gaussian elimination on that one will give me 
results if I've got a unique solution, an infinite number of solutions, and no solution. But this is how we use the inverse matrix to solve systems of linear equations.